before you ever became involved in VR, you had an amazing career in journalism. What sort of inspired you to take uh, journalism to the immersive level beyond what the page and video can do? So I'd done both, right? I'd done uh, print journalism, I'd done documentary film, um, but I was always teaching myself to code. And I always had a relationship with computers that um, went above and beyond um, the 2D world. Mm -hmm. I saw that as a space to really take people in, you know, in this embodied way. And the first crazy piece we built was funded by the MacArthur Foundation, uh, built at the Bay Area Video Coalition, um, and it was a virtual Guantanamo Bay prison in Second Life, uh, done with an artist named Peggy Weil. The idea was we wanted to bring you to a place, even though it was virtual, it was accessible. And it was based on a lot of work I'd done, uh, you know, including Freedom of Information Act material and investigative work around the prison. And after making that, I can remember the moment I was sitting in my backyard at the picnic table and thinking, hey, I could use this for all kinds of journalism. And that began the journey for, uh, for where we are today. Yeah. And uh, I saw some great articles crediting you as the godmother of VR. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you like that title? You know, it's a tough one in many ways. Um, uh, cause there's so many pioneers in this field, right? Um, so I feel sometimes it gives me, you know, that kind of credit. But, but at the same time, um, there's so many uh, really interesting artists who are able to experience uh, virtual reality through Hunger in Los Angeles, which is a piece that premiered at Sundance in January of 2012 that really inspired them to um, engage with this medium. And so in that way, I feel pretty proud. How did people look at you when you were presenting this like virtual reality thing in 2012? People barely know what virtual reality is now in 2017. Oh, five years later. Yeah. So. Um, I guess um, I was lucky enough that the curators at Sundance saw it as a uh, monumental piece and enough to give us this huge room. And we ended up with like three hour wait lines and people were coming out of it crying and bawling and the word really spread around the festival. And um, I collected data, I collected surveys while I was there and I came back and I had all this, you know, sense that, that this was really a, a very um, viable place to start to do journalism and have kept at it ever since. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, how do you choose the projects that you do? Like you, you like this year here at uh, South by Southwest, you have some really hard-hitting hard, hard stories on like solitary confinement in prisons and then um, on the, the front lines of the war in Sudan. What, what inspires you to take people to those places? You know, I think journalistically, um, one of the best quotes comes from Martha Gellhorn, who was a World War II reporter, and she called it the view from the ground. <clears throat> and that idea of the view from the ground uh, that um, we as journalists want to give people the sense of being there and being present, um, I, I think this is part of our tradition. It's part of what we want to do. And I think um, these are places that are inaccessible to most people. And how do we, how do we get them to understand these important issues? Um, VR seems to be the best uh, medium that I've ever worked in to do that. Do you think that VR is going to like change journalism in the sense of being able to really bring people on the ground and give them real empathy for other people's experiences? So, you know, I think my son put it best when he said, if you feel like you're there, you can also feel like it can happen to you too. And um, I think that's maybe one reason why people have a, a closer uh, connection to the story when they're in a VR story. Um, and I think that a lot of journalism organizations are embracing this medium because they recognize, again, this has sort of been the holy grail. Um, how do we get people to really uh, uh, feel like they're there? Now, that doesn't mean that VR is going to take over all stories. There's going to be some stories that are much better off in print or <laughs> that broadcast TV or radio are going to do better than virtual reality. But I think it really offers a super unique, incredibly powerful uh, uh, new part of the palette.